Yo, what is up guys, Ultra Balls back with another SPL game. Uh, this is actually, so this was a week 8 game, so this happened a few weeks ago, but, you know, me and Doc are still trying to catch up on a lot of these games. So, today you have a Sun and Moon game between TDK and BTB the GOAT. Um, look at the teams quick. TDK brings some sand balance. You don't see it too often, just because it's not necessarily that great, uh, like currently, but, um, Z-Move Excadrill is actually pretty good, I like that mon. Uh, because, like, Steel Z could break through Lando and stuff like that. BTB brings team with Victini. Uh, it could either be Scarfed or Banded or Z Celebrate, I'd assume. Uh, and then Mammal Swine's probably Metronome to help with Stall. Because the rest of the team looks like it'd get bodied by Stall. So, Alright, so the Victini's in. Uh, we could probably tell from here what this Victini uh, is going to be. So, TDK's best bet is, yeah, to go into Toxapex. It could take U-turns, uh, whatever. That actually, that's Banded as shit. So, this probably... Like, this doesn't really take Banded Volt Strike at all because, uh, Volt, Volt Strike, Bolt Strike. Uh, it doesn't really take that at all because Tox Specs all runs per def, so. If he, um, if BTB Bolt Strike there would have done a bajillion. That did a bunch anyway. Uh, Pax could really just lay up a T-Spike here though, yeah, knowing that BTB is forced out. So, BTB goes into the Mammoth Swine on a potential Recover or Toxic Spike. Uh, the thing is, this Toxic Spike super annoying for BTB, um... The Scarfer is probably, if it's Banded Victini, the Scarfer is probably either Lottie or Lando would be my guess. Uh, so the, it's probably going to be a Scarf Defog, which obviously isn't very good when you're dealing with T-Spikes. And he's got four Mons affected, so I feel like that could be a big part of the game. Uh, or three Mons, I should say. But there are three of his offensive threats. So all of his offensive Mons are going to be getting worn down quick if he can't get the T-Spikes off. So we see a nice hard Pharaoh on Celesteela. Only veterans are allowed to make plays like that. Um, now... Uh, BTB could throw up a Leech Seed if he wants, uh, because then even if TDK decides to Flamethrower the Ferrothorn, uh, with Lefties and, uh, Leech Seed Recovery, it's not gonna be doing that much. Especially because Ferrothorns are running a bunch of Spidef nowadays for, like, Greninja and stuff, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then TDK, if he doesn't want to stay in, like, his, his plays are probably either to Flamethrower or to go into, like, I don't even know. He doesn't even have that much to go into. So I think he does have to just flamethrower. Yeah. Uh, the flamethrower play makes a lot of, like, that was, like, pretty much his only play there. As BTB goes back into Victini. Uh, the thing is, like, because Steela has Protect, he's always forced to V-Create. Uh, because if he clicks anything else, really, the Steela could stay in. And now, uh, TDK, uh, could double on the V-Create into the Toxapex or into the Tyranitar. Uh, he actually goes Landorus. Uh, I guess if this is defensive Landorus, it would eat it up, kind of, but... Even that's like, it still takes a shit ton from Bandit, so. Uh, either way, we see an exchange of rocks as we go into Steela, as we see it's Double Hazard Ferrothorn. Uh, the Ferrothorn does stay in this time, uh, and just Leech Seeds, which is, you know what, like I was saying, he could have done last time, because you see the net damage isn't too much after BTB gets the recovery there. Uh, so now TDK uh, is once again in a pretty bad position. Uh, he goes Excadrill, which isn't like a great switch into Pharaoh. I guess I guess like because the Pharaoh's intimidated, right? So uh, I guess TDK could spin here. That makes the most sense to me uh, because these hazards are going to be really annoying. I feel like he should just get them off. Um, BTB, BTB could either like Power Whip or go Hard Lando. Uh, but yeah, like because the Ferrothorn's intimidated. It's not going to be doing much back to the Excadrill. So I feel like TDK is kind of free to spin here. As we do see the Landers come out from BTB. Is TDK... Oh, is that Z Steel? Z Ground, huh? <laughs> what the fuck? Alright, so BTB looks like a Lord Jesus. But there, there's no way he predicted that. Because that's not even a set. I don't get, like... The thing is, in Sand at plus 2... You, what do you need Tech Rage for? Like... You want Z Steel because it's able to break through stuff like Landorus. Even if, like, Rocks are up, it can break through Zapdos, which are, like, the two only decent switch ins to Excadrill, to be honest. So, like, to me, it's weird that you would that you'd have Tech Rage. I don't know what that's for. It's obviously for something. I I'm just not exactly sure what. Uh, but, yeah, U-Turn was really was a perfectly fine there by BTB. TDK wants to keep the Excadrill for sure. Uh, he still has his uh, Tyranitar nice and healthy, so... He's going to want to keep that for potential cleaning late game with uh, with sand support. So TDK goes into the Landers on the U-turn. And now BTB is probably going to go into... Uh, we already saw that the Landers is a defensive. I'm pretty sure we saw. Uh, it is leftovers. So if we didn't see it before, we do see it now. Uh, as he goes into Latios. Uh, so this is either Scarf or Mega. 
Uh, but no, it's it's Scarf Lando on BTB side, I'm pretty sure. So this is definitely, not definitely, but most likely going to be Mega Teos. Um, I guess it could also be Z-Move, but it's probably just Mega. Um, BTB might be going Z-List here, because, unless the Gren Z, but the Gren is probably, I guess it could be like a Protean Z-Move, or it's just like normal Specs Gren. Um, but yeah, that's probably going to be the two. If it is a Z-Move on this team, it'll be on the Gren, um, but... It could definitely, it could just be Z-less. Uh, yeah, so we see the Psycho double out, BTB doubles out, uh, predicting the Celest, I don't know, like Celestilo is the best switch there for TDK, right? So I don't know what Landorus accomplishes. I guess, I don't know, the Stila isn't, Stila's knocked off though from the Mammo, and it's taken some Leech Seed chips, so it's not that healthy. Uh, so that's why TDK maybe didn't want to go into that. He goes into Coco instead. Um, if it shook a Coco, it probably it, there, it might be a roll to live this uh, for Earthquake. I don't know exactly. I guess it depends on uh, because like you know the investment on Scarf Landos is really hard to determine. Um, there's like a lot of different spreads going around. So BTB does U-turn. If Earthquake didn't kill through Shooka, that was the safest play anyway. Uh, even if he does U-turn and Coco stays in, like you have a good switch in in, Fer in Ferrothorn anyway, so it doesn't really matter. And now B2B could just uh, uh, throw up a Leech Seed. Uh, TDK has two options. Well, I guess he could go into... This Ferrothorn is so annoying for TDK. Because he's going to want to eventually try and spin with Excadrill, but with all the hazards up, you don't really want to be switching it in uh, on all the hazards into a Ferrothorn because you don't even beat it that well. Like, you hardly... Now that you wasted your Z, you, I don't think you'd beat it 1v1 anyway. So you'd almost have to suicide spin. So he goes into Pex because that's, like, the only thing that really wants to come in to, to Leech and not really care about it. Uh, especially because, like I said, the Stila is um, knocked off. And uh, so if it's coming in on rocks with no leftovers and it's getting Leech seated, that thing's going to get worn down super quickly. So he goes into Pex, doubles into Landers. His BTB could either throw up another Spike... Or switching to Latios, uh, not wanting to potentially get the Ferrothorn Scald burned. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And now BTB could just throw off another Psychic. He just roosts on Protect. That was goat play too. Um, and now we just see probably Psychic come out. It's the most consistent damage against everything. And yeah, pick off the Tapu Koko as now the T-Tar could come out for free. Obviously TDK doesn't want to ever go hard T-Tar in case BTB Earthquakes because you'd see it get to a KO'd. Is he just crunches knowing that BTB just wants the damage off anyway. Uh, and now, but the good thing is the Ty Tyrantar is super weakened. So if this thing gets sacked off, then uh, BTB is not going to have to worry about the uh, Excadrill under sand anymore for the rest of the game. Uh, or there's going to be limited sand turns. So like whenever this sand runs out, it's pretty much it. Um, yeah, but now BTB could go into the Mamoswine or the Greninja. Uh, you could you could go Gren and Dart, or, but like... You go Grand Dark Pulse probably doesn't kill, and then TDK just gets a free uh, Pex because you're probably forced to Hydro. So I think Mammo makes the most sense here. I guess you could also go into Victini and V Create is another option, but yeah, this Victini's not doing shit. This is why Victini's like not a good mon, even though the damage output's crazy. It's like weak to rocks and it's just shitty. Um, but yeah, BTB's thinking about what's his best course of action. Obviously, he has a lot of ways to revenge this. Uh, he goes Scarf Lando just to U-turn, which, yeah, that's a good play, too. There's a lot of options to revenge kill the Tyranitar, but you want to pick the one that um, will give you the most momentum, pretty much. The, like This was like the best play for him, because you could go in U-turn and now get momentum into either the uh, Mamoswine, the Victini, the Gren, uh, and yeah. So now that the Victini's... Well, I don't get why he went Victini, though, right? Because he just protects you and you just die. See, this is why Victini's so dog shit. <laughs> Alright, so nice nice showing from Victini. It did a solid 42 Toxapex that got regened off in one turn. And that was that was all that thing did. So, But yeah, Mammo's in... This is why I don't get... He should have just went Mammo before, I feel like. I don't get... Yeah. Okay, but now the Tyranitar sacked off. And... How much? There's only one turn of sand left, so the extra drill kind of becomes a non-factor because there's a Gren and there's a, a Landers in the back. So he does go Landers on a potential, uh, well, anything. It would eat up Iron Head, obviously immune to Earthquake. Uh, his TDK takes the chance, takes this chance to spin, which I really agree with. His BTB could fog, yeah, because this was obviously the fogger. 
um, on BTB side. He needed the T spike on. He doesn't want like the Gren could be problematic for a TDK if it could get a flinch on the Pex. So he doesn't want that thing uh, poisoned because if the Gren gets poisoned, I'm pretty sure it's going to be game over for BTB. Uh, he needs to keep the Gren. Yeah, he needs to keep the T spikes off now uh, and potentially try and do something with Gren, like flinch down the Pex or something like that. Okay, so goes into Pharaoh on the X control predicting Iron Head. Nice play. Uh, BTB could either sack the Pharaoh or try and pivot on an Earthquake. Uh, Lando would probably live anything anyway, so this makes the most sense. Even if he Iron Headed, I'm sure you'd live. Uh, because most Landos run a good amount of bulk, and, I mean, it's a Landers. It would, even if there's no bulk, I'm sure it would live from 47. Uh, so he U-turns into the Gren on the SD. Uh, I mean, this was all completely fine, because even if, even if TDK Earthquake there, it's intimidated, so... It's not, like, the, you're not really risking much. What? I, why, why would you do that? that? You just, like, lose now. You had a full-ass health Toxapex. Like, that was a misplay as fuck, because now your Toxapex doesn't beat the Greninja at all. Because, uh, Ash-formed Gren is doing, like, 50% with Dark Pulse, and you're forced to recover, like, every single time. See what I mean? Okay, so he T-spikes. He's getting him up for next game. <laughs> But like, yeah, I, I feel like TDK was in a pretty solid spot if he just didn't sack Excadrill. I don't know why he gave this Ash. That was like a really bad misplay. Because now the Greninja just is going to win. Uh, because the Toxapex is forced to spam Recover and over and over. And the Gren's going to get almost like infinite chances to flinch the Pex. And the thing is, the Toxapex doesn't have Toxic. So the only thing it could do to the Gren is Scald it. So even if it is able to like heal back to full, BTB doesn't even have to switch out. He could just keep clicking Dark Pulse. Uh, it's in situations like these where like you really wish that you had Toxic on your Toxapex. Uh, but obviously in some matchups, T-Spikes is like so broken. So he's just going to keep spamming Dark Pulse as uh, TDK spams Recover. But it, and Toxapex only has 16 Recovers anyway, and Pulse has like 24, I think. So I yeah... I mean, TDK just scalds. Even if he gets the burn, I don't think that the Gren is going to get worn down fast enough. So now, um, I guess TDK could save this and then try and recover spam again. But like I said, that's still a losing battle. He goes Landorus. Landorus will be able to eat one of these. Uh, I feel like the sack was Celestila. Uh, because if the Landorus was able to eat a Dark Pulse, you could have went into the Landorus afterwards as opposed to the uh, Toxapex. And then BTB would be forced out. Uh, well, it wouldn't... He would live even a U-turn, so I don't think that would even matter. But, yeah, this is game over. I guess, like, BTB might af be f afraid of, like, a crit or something. or So he might switch out, and then you could get the Greninja poison later and then try and recover spam with Pex. But, like, now it's just over. And the Celesteela comes out. What is the... Oh, the Celesteela was low as shit anyway. Yeah, so it eats one, but even if the Leech Seed hit, it wasn't going to matter. Uh, he has... Like, he could save this and then pump the Steela. He also has, uh, I'm assuming, Metronome Mammo in the back. So this is pretty much over anyway. Uh, BTB says sorry, but, like, yeah, 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 TDK's right. That didn't matter. BTB just showing why he's such a model Smogon user there. Uh, always paying respect when there's some hacks. But, yeah, BTB wins this game. Uh, I thought he played really well, and I thought TDK played fine too until sacking Drill, which really did just lose the game pretty much right there. Uh, as you saw, that's kind of how it played out. Um... Yeah, I didn't really understand the play, but yeah, uh, BTB comes out with a win here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I think Doc probably will have the score somewhere here at the end of the video. Not like it matters too much because <laughs> this happened like two, I don't know, two, two and a half weeks ago now. So, but yeah, you see, okay, BTB getting on the board for the Sharks here, one, two. But like I said, this this game or this series has been over for a while. So if you want to see the result of this, just look on the link on, could just go to Smogon or whatever. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, Ultra Balls out. Peace.